Hello, I'm Rahul, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Bangalore, India. Today, I'm going to show you how to enable end-to-end -end encryption by using an SSL certificate with Elastic Load Balancer as well as with the EC2 instances registered behind the Elastic Load Balancer. Let's get started. Note that an Amazon issued certificate cannot be installed on an EC2 instance. To enable end-to-end -end encryption, you must procure an SSL certificate from a third-party vendor. You can then install the certificate on the EC2 instance and also associate the same certificate with the load balancer by importing it into Amazon Certificate Manager. I'll walk you through the installation of the certificate on Apache as well as IIS web servers. Let's get started. We'll begin the demo with Apache Web Server followed by IIS. Let's first use SSH to connect to EC2 instance which hosts my website. The EC2 instance is launched using an Amazon Linux AMI and runs an Apache Web Server. I load my website apache.awskcvideo.info on a web browser over HTTPS. You can see that I get an insecure domain error on the browser. We'll fix this by installing the certificate on the Apache Web Server. Let's install the mod SSL module for Apache by running the command sudo yum install mod SSL hyphen y. Copy the certificate files provided by the third party vendor and the private key to a directory within the instance, or we can create one, say certs under etc. I'm copying the leave certificate to the certs directory on my EC2 instance. Similarly, let me copy the private key of my certificate inside my certs directory. Finally, let me also copy the certificate chain to my search directory. Next, we must make sure that the certificate files have the owner as root and permission set to 600, that is with full read-write permission to the file owner. With the above command, I change the permissions of the leave certificate file. Let us repeat the process for the private key and certificate chain files as well. Now, we'll add the location of the certificate files in the ssl.con file. We'll be looking for the default location of the three files, the leave certificate, the certificate chain, and the private key in the ssl.con file. Replace the default location with the location of our actual certificate files. You can use any text editor such as Vim, Nano, etc. to edit the ssl.con file. Let's save the file and restart the httpd daemon. Now let's check to see if with these configurations we can get the website running on HTTPS connection. Congratulations, you have successfully installed the SSL certificate on EC2 instance running an Apache web server. Now, let's get started with the installation of the certificate on our IIS web server. My IIS web server runs the website iis.awskcvideo.info. I'll open this in a web browser over HTTPS. You can see the insecure connection error. We'll fix this. I'll first use RDP to connect to my EC2 instance which hosts my website. The instance is launched using a Windows Server 2012 R2 AMI and runs an IIS 8 web server. Here I am already connected to my instance. Before we proceed to install the certificate on IIS, we'll check to see if the root certificate of the CA is present in the trust store of the web server. To do this, open Microsoft Management Console using the run command. In the console one window, choose the file menu and then select add or remove snap-in. In the add or remove snap-in window, select certificates and then choose add. In the certificate snap-in window, select computer account and then choose next. In the select computer window, select local computer and then choose finish. In the add or remove snap-in window, choose ok. Expand the certificates. Under trusted root certificate authorities, check if the root CA that issued the certificate to you is present. If it is not present, choose the Action menu, All Tasks, Import. In the Certificate Import Wizard, choose Next and browse the root CA certificate. Find your root CA certificate and click Open. Leave everything else as it is and import by choosing Finish. Repeat the same procedure for the Intermediate Certificate Authority as well. Lastly, we'll close the console one window and then choose no to remove the console settings. Next, we'll launch the server manager to make changes to our IIS configuration. Choose tools and then select internet information services manager. In the connections panel on the left, choose the server name where you want to install the certificate. Double click on the server certificates in the middle panel. Now, we'll import the certificate in .pfx format to the web server. To do this, in the Actions panel on the right, choose Import. 
Select the .pfx format of the certificate from your local machine and then enter the password. For SSL certificate store, choose personal. Next, we'll edit the binding settings of the web server. To do this, in the connections panel on the left, select the name of the server where you installed the certificate. Expand sites and then select the site that you want to secure with the SSL certificate. I'll select my default website. Now, on the actions panel on the right, select bindings. In the pop-up window, choose add. In the new pop-up for protocol type, we'll select HTTPS. For IP address, select either all unassigned or select the IP address of the site. We'll leave the port as 443 and then select the SSL certificate that we imported earlier. Choose OK to save the changes. Restart the IIS server to incorporate the changes made to the IIS. Let's check to see if with the above configurations, we can get the website running on HTTPS connection. Congratulations, you have successfully installed the SSL certificate on an EC2 instance running an IIS web server. You can now import the same certificate into ACM and associate the certificate with your elastic load balancer. It is important to note here that for the demo, I mapped my websites directly to the IP address of EC2 instances using an A record. After you associate the certificate with the load balancer, you must edit the mappings in your hosted zone. You need to point your website to the DNS name of the load balancer and not to the IP address of the EC2 instance to route the traffic to the website by means of the load balancer. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.